Hey, what is up? Today I am going to be showing you how to set up Kali Linux on your Raspberry Pi. I recently purchased a Raspberry Pi here not too long ago at a micro center. I'll also do an unboxing for this later. Before that, we're gonna figure out how to set up Kali Linux and there's two ways to do it. You can either use the Raspberry Pi imager and if that doesn't work, you can also fall back to this etcher. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get started, you're gonna wanna install the Raspberry Pi imager or the etcher on your computer. I would just install both of them and I'm gonna provide links for these in the description. In order to get started, you're gonna need a few things. The first thing is obviously your Raspberry Pi and it can be any Raspberry Pi, three, four, or five, to go with that Raspberry Pi, you need your micro SD card. I have this small 128 gigabyte. I don't know if you can read that, let's see. I've got this small SD card and I wanna be able to hook it up to my computer. So I got this micro SD adapter and a little USB fob that I can attach my micro SD card into my adapter. You take all that and you gotta plug this into your computer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug the micro SD card into my computer here. This should pop up on one of these devices and drives here. Let's see how long that takes. All right, so we got a, a E drive and a G drive here. And I installed something here, but what I'm gonna do is reformat the whole disk. One easy way to format your disk, you can either format it through here on your file explorer, but I also like to use my disk manager. So if you're on Windows, you can look up Disk Manager and there should be a Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Once I open this up, it should show me all the different partitions I have. You definitely don't wanna format your main drivers, so I'm gonna leave these two alone. But down here, I have my SD card that I attached to the computer. When you add your SD card, you're gonna get different things in this area. Uh, the reason why you're seeing this is because I already formatted this disk to run on Kali, but I'm gonna restart it again. Usually you're gonna see something else or the file's not gonna be able to write because it's not in the right format. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up this stuff so I can prep it for the formatting. So I can see I have 120 gigabytes unallocated. The first thing you want to do is create a new sample volume and we want to make sure let's I'm going to choose uh, drive Z and the first thing you want to make sure to check is the EFAT formatting. The NTFS, it doesn't work with um, these OS's that you're trying to set up. They all use FAT32, which is not available here, so you have to use FATEX. And I'm gonna do a quick format, which just lets the computer know that this disk is allowed to be, uh, has open space to write to. So we got this new format, EFAT, uh, the first thing you can try is use this Raspberry Pi. If the Raspberry Pi imager doesn't work like it didn't work for me the first time, we can use this etcher to fall back on. All right, so I have a Raspberry Pi 5. In order to select Linux for this option, we want to do 
other specific purpose OS and there should be Kali available here. And I'm gonna choose that new disk that we just partitioned, the Z drive. Okay, so it looks like that was successful. I was able to partition the file. Uh, it seems like there's extra partitions it created. If that doesn't work the first time, like it didn't work the first time for me, it took a lot of troubleshooting to figure it out. I decided to go with Etcher, and if you wanna go with this second option, what you gotta do is go to Kali, get Kali. And inside of here, we can search for, I like to just do res, um, control F raspberry. So if you do a control F raspberry Pi on the get Kali website, it'll lead you to this Kali arm Linux distribution. And you can select which Pi version you wanna use. Since I have raspberry Pi 5, I downloaded this one. Once you have it downloaded, you can go to Etcher and select the file. Before that, I'm going to reformat this disk, my SD card, so we can run this process again. So we got unallocated, it might be something else, but what you need to do is new sample volume, select the drive, I'm gonna go with Z again, and instead of NTFS, we select EXFAT, finish. Now that the SD card is ready, let's go to Etcher, select flash from a file, here you can see I downloaded that ARM image. When you first download the Kali image from Kali Linux, they're gonna give you a compressed XZ file. What you gotta do with that XZ file is you gotta extract it. You can extract it with uh, Win7. Uh, once it's extracted, you'll get this IMG file. So you wanna use this MG fi IMG file and then select the target. I'm going to choose that Z drive we formatted and we should be able to... Okay, so it looks like it was able to flash Kali to the SD card successfully. What I'm gonna do is uh, do a little bit of unboxing montage and we're gonna see if it works.
Now that you got your uh, flash drive set up with Kali Linux and you got your Raspberry Pi set up as well, what you're going to want to do is take the SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi here. So for my, right, it's right here. go and you should be able to plug it in and go go ahead and plug in the power button and the HDMI cord and I'm also gonna set up the uh, mouse and keyboard connection I have a wonky mouse and keyboard set up here so we're going to use that. It looks like it's booting up. When it first initially boots up, it's going to do a little bit of loading. And we'll see what happens here. Sweet, so we got Kali working on our Raspberry Pi 5. That's pretty sick. Think about all the other things you could probably do with it. I was considering purchasing the following. So, technically, we could probably get our Kali machine with Raspberry Pi running 24 7 with the backup uninterruptible power supply which you can buy here if you get this with the batteries you can make your Kali device mobile and you can bring it along with you these are a few of the items I was considering purchasing to set up my Kali Linux for mobile transport but I was thinking about it a little bit more and I really don't know if it really fits my use case I, I feel like if I just bring a laptop that would be sufficient enough. One cool thing about this though is you could probably try and make it so you have a Raspberry Pi instance that is always up and always available to run Kali. So you could probably SSH into it from your phone and do some cool stuff from afar. But for me, I was considering getting these items but I don't think I will. I have a few other ideas I want to run through with my Raspberry Pi. Anyways, that's how you can get your Raspberry Pi set up with Kali Linux. I hope you enjoyed the video. I might do some other things with my Raspberry Pi and not use it as Kali Linux instance, but stay tuned. We will see. Bye for now.